So today we're going to talk about tachometers. I've got this DC brush motor here. It's got about uh, 24 volts per thousand RPM. I want to go a thousand RPM. So maybe I need a little bit more than a 24 volt supply. I've got the nano drive here, the nano plus, it, which has uh, 16 bit A to D inputs for plus or minus 10 volts. Um, on the back of the motor, there's a tachometer with brushes, just like the brush motor's got brushes, the tachometer has brushes. But the tachometer gives me about 30, 30 volts at 2000 RPM, and that's too much for the analog input. So I've added some resistors to divide it down uh, at the input to the analog is about 5K. So I threw a couple of 5Ks in series with the output of the tach. And so that divides me down from 30 volts to 10 volts. So plus or minus 10 volts is going to be about 2000 RPM. Uh, I'll go into more detail in the note, but just the basic idea is I'm commanding zero velocity, yet my motor's rotating. So this nano has not been calibrated for offset. Uh, it's not a tachometer offset, right? When the motor's not spinning, you'll get zero volts. So when, so this little bit of rotation is caused by the offset in the analog input having not been calibrated. Um, you can see on the voltmeter, you got about seven, uh, 73 millivolts here of offset measured at the tachometer divide by uh you know three you're going to get like 25 millivolts of uh offset uh, at the analog input because it's an analog circuit hasn't has not been calibrated um i'm measuring also with the scope uh differentially between the two uh, tachometer outputs before it goes into the drive so this uh, common mode noise here uh, is a little voltage from the offset and the rotation because the tax measuring as it's rotating. But the, the, the common mode noise is rejected by the differential receiver. So you can see sort of a add and invert. Uh, these two get subtracted. It looks clean, nice and flat. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, it's noise, it's analog, but uh, good signal to noise ratio should should keep things humming just fine. Um, so we'll take a look at the basic construction of a tachometer. It's just a, a brush motor that's rotating on the bearings and there's some brushes and a commutator and a voltage gets generated uh, so that we can measure the, the speed of the motor. Um, I'm gonna take a look at a tachometer here uh, I found this from ServoTech, but just the basic idea is uh, constructed with a mill standard. So good construction and testing. Brush life. So your brushes will wear out 100,000 hours at 3,600 RPM, equivalent of 10 years of operation at about 1 milliamp. So when you generate voltage, you're going to have some current flowing through. So current's probably less than 1 milliamp at the analog input. Uh, linearity is of attack is good, 0.1% uh, of the RPM. However, when, when you're going slow, you'll notice there's some ripple due to the commutator. This says 1.5%. Um, I think on average, we might be doing better with this one here. Uh, Bidirectional tolerance, 0.25%. So the voltage generated should be pretty accurate in both directions. Um, stability, uh, about 0.1%. Um, no, no evidence of long-term drift, so that's that's good. Uh, breakdown voltage is high. Uh, temperature range. This is an advantage of a tachometer. It can operate from really hot to really cold. Um, but here's the normal range of temperature minus 20 to 75, sort of commercial grade. And these guys, of course, make tachometers in various voltages. Here's a you know 10 volt output. So when you're spinning at 1,000 RPM, you get 10 volts, uh, that's good for scaling a tachometer to our 10 volt input if you want to go 1,000 RPM. But if you want to go 3,000 RPM, you'll need to put some resistors in line. But you can specify the tolerance or ripple so you can get, you know, tight, tighter tolerances uh, uh, of, of the, the voltage. Um, so the... Basic idea is that we're going to do a tachometer, 
tachometer in a pseudo position mode. You can't really hold position. It's going to drift, as you see, based on offset. Uh, we can try to compensate for that, but gee, maybe over temperature or time, you'll get a little drift out of it. So pseudo position, it's not real position, but it's good for profile velocity and using network systems. So that's good. Um, be careful when you're hooking up the tack. If you hook it up backwards, it runs away. I just swap motor wires. Same rules as the old Copley 412. Um, yeah, calculating the resistor. So if you're at a certain speed, you're going to get a voltage and you divide it down. Uh, what resistor should we select here? Real simple formula. Uh, you can see, uh, well, you have to uh, uh, balance. You get these two resistors in series with whatever the input impedance is. It says 5.3 K, but that's in parallel with 249.9 K. So it's really more like 5 K or 5.01 K. Um, so there's a little more precise calculation here in the application note. Um, so we'll take a look at uh, CME and how to compensate for the drift that we can see uh, in the camera system. Um, So it's, it's drifting at the moment, and uh, I'm not measuring any change in position. I'm not measuring any voltage because it's an analog offset. So there's a parameter for setting the offset. It's uh, 0x1a, and we saw about 25 millivolts of offset. So I'm just going to compensate it. So there we go. Uh, no more uh, visible drifting. Uh, if you let it sit here overnight or for the weekend, I, I had it, when I came in over a few days, it had, it had rotated a bit. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, it's only a 16 bit. So you're down to the, you know, one quantum of a 16 bit A to D on this. Um, but let's go through the basic setup here. How do we get this uh, ready for tuning? Um, basic setup DC. This is a DC brush motor with a tachometer. Uh, we should have a position on the load, but we'll add that to the software later. Um, no, I'm using the analog input and I'm saying, okay, at uh, 10 volts, it'll be 2000 RPM based on the tachometer scaling, which I don't know. They're telling me I got five volts per K RPM, but, uh, I question that. A uh, dead band, I don't normally use it unless I can't adjust the balance perfectly. Uh, you could add a little dead band, but this is an offset. It's a dead band near zero, so you, you're not going to be able to, it won't creep, but then again, you won't be able to control really, really slow speed. So I, you know, question mark on whether we should use that or not, but there's the feature. Uh, don't ignore the feedback. You can stop. Uh, I'm using position mode. You could do over can. You could do pure velocity, like in the old days we used to do an analog voltage to command speed. And in that case, you could use the sign input, uh, although uh, the firmware is being developed to have an offset for that. But it is calibrated in the factory, so it probably should be uh, pretty good. Anyways, we enter the data for the motor. Uh, the torque constant, the back EMF constant. Uh, we calculate uh, current loop tuning values. We can tune the current loop. Maybe a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth's good. Uh, I use this to phase the motor. So when I <laughs> when I jog it forward in current, the voltage uh, should should go. You know, the count should go up and the speed should go up. If if it's inverted, you'll get runaway. So swap the motor wires. So you can just swap it. Uh, uh, it's easier to swap the motor wires and the tack wires because I, I got them soldered on there. Uh, you can tune the velocity loop, set some speed limits. Uh, that's if the tack is still connected. If it's disconnected, that's a runaway condition and you'll have to take countermeasures, some sort of position observer or voltage limit to shut down the drive. Um, and then of course, uh, tuned up the position loop uh, the counts per rev, I had to try to figure that out by rotating the motor one time and seeing how many counts it was. I got about 575 plus or minus some, you know, because it's pseudo. Um, but you can see here, 
that uh, up there. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's drifted a little bit. So, you know, I can do the offset a little bit or give it some dead band to prevent drift, but it's not really position control. It's pseudo. So it's really good at velocity. So you got to, you, 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 if you have a linear or if you have a system that has hard stops, you got to use limit switches. Um, so for the tuning, you know, do the current loop, do the velocity loop. Um, we can execute a trajectory with the T1 command, uh, 575. So obviously a little, a little more work on CME here at the moment. Um, I'm using an engineering version, but uh, you can you can make a move. I'm going to do a 10 rev move and hit record, make the move. And so yeah, the motor. Uh, if one rev is 575, then uh, 10 times that would be 10 revs. Um, you can see the uh, acceleration. Uh, the deceleration uh, based on my trajectory here. That was a one rev move. Let's do 10 rev. There we go. There's a 10 rev. See, pseudo position. Uh, you got to have a position observer somewhere to make sure you're not smashing into the hard stop. Let's see if I can get a trace of that. Um, you can also monitor the, you know, voltage. Uh, power supply, the voltage limit warnings, the current. Uh, I'm just looking at the profile velocity and the pseudo position following error while while we move. It looks tuned rather well, so that should be uh, good. And um, here's the the position, uh, the pseudo position, and uh, we'll take a quick peek at the the app note. It will talk about. Uh, you can use one volt, you can phase, tune the velocity loop, do the balance, pseudo position move, just like we did. Uh, 0.1 pseudo uh, velocity regulation, but it's still limited by the tachometer. 1% velocity speed control, so a little ripply based on the commutator. And uh, there's a little dead band you can set, uh, and there's a note on safety. So... Uh, that's the basic on uh, tachometers used in the Copley Plus drives, the uh, latest 4.60 firmware. Uh, thanks for watching.